Jeremy, my husband, um, decided to like, hey, we need to to start something, you know, on our own. And that's when we actually um, established the recovery and worked on our um, product and launching it. But what happened through all this year when I was running, I was creating great relationships, not only with race directors, but athletes who were maybe better than me or slower than me, it doesn't matter. But, you know, being kind and always be engaged with anyone where you go race and um, be appreciative for what you're doing. Did you know that we each lose a different amount of electrolytes in our sweat, largely based on our genetics? That means that there's no one size fits all perfect sports drink for everybody because we each have unique needs. That's why we at Solpre developed the Sync Hydration System, a series of sports drinks to help match you with the personal level of electrolytes that you need. If you'd like us to help you match with your perfect sports drink, go to solpre.com slash hydration dash quiz. That's solpre.com slash hydration dash quiz. Welcome to the Smart Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Funk. My guest today, currently a pro runner with ASICS. She has a number of top finishes, including a second place finish at the Chicago Marathon. Um, she was a champion at the USA Half Marathon, um, qualified the Olympic trials three times, uh, has her degree in kinesiology. Even though that's been a minute ago, I still think it's important to mention. Um, interestingly, and if you know anything about her, you may already know who I'm talking about. She has represented two countries, both Romania and the USA, in the Half Marathon Championship. She's a co-founder of Roll Recovery. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram at Addie Nelson. Welcome to the show, Adriana Nelson. Hey, great. Thank you. And uh, finally, we met it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, so for you, the listener, you don't have all the background. So we've rescheduled a couple of times um, with Addie. First, um, because my wife and I had a baby. And then so we were <laughs> busy at the hospital, not in a place where I could record. Um, and then schedules got busy with the second one. But we we're finally here, um, able to hang out for today. So thanks for being flexible with your schedule and, and life. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it, it, there's so many things to ask you. It's, it's hard to quite know where to start. Um, so one of the things we were talking about before we were recording uh, is maybe the challenge of continuing to be a professional runner as you age. Um, so I guess, Maybe let's start there. And can you talk to me, I guess, through your career, maybe how things have changed, how you feel, training, any of that kind of stuff, just anything you you think is significant or worth note. Yeah, let's start a little bit of coming from a college degree, like, you know, college uh, um, run career. And I knew for a long time before that even I want to pursue being a runner. But more, more than that, when I came to the US, I came actually with a scholarship and that was like a huge thing for me. <clears throat> my voice. It was my first for a week, so sorry. Yeah, yeah just so if if Addie's yeah. gotta take a drink of water, just be patient with us. Yeah. She's losing her voice, so we just <laughs> It's been a big, long recovery, especially I can't take any medication because I'm expecting a second baby and I don't want to take any medications. I'm like, no. Anyway, so coming in the U.S. with speaking no English, being able to finish my degree really quickly, um, I pretty much accelerated through that. In three, three and a half years, I finished my degree. I wanted to be done quick. And then I got immediately approached by ASICS and I, um, I've been with them since 2006, which is, has been amazing and they've been such a great support for me in my ups and downs, you know, um, very loyal company. Anyway, um, 
I think the, the biggest challenge was more like the fact that I was alone in the US and you just have to take your um, yourself up there, basically like pursue, pursue what you actually envision yourself to see, in, you know, to do what, what to do in this like running career. Um, but I was lucky enough to actually be able to run well and um, able to uh, take care of myself. I didn't need, my parents did not help me. I had to help them, them Romania, it's a different life. Um, I had a great manager who, you know, supported me like through his time and, you know, put me in races that he knew I was able to <clears throat> do well. Um, in 2005, I represented Romania and we actually won a gold medal, the world championship, and I finished top 10. And that was great because I was, I was still in college in that last year, but I was already running freshly, let's say, let's put it that way. Um, so that put me on the map a little bit. And that's how I actually got approached by other companies. Hey, we want you. Like, I consider it luck, but at the same time, you know, whatever I was doing at that time, I was doing it right. Um, moving forward, like I, I went to all the, you know, majors and it was great to be always kind of top 10 in the majors. It's amazing. I'm still missing Tokyo on my, on my, um, uh, plate basically just because pandemic came and, uh, there's no way to get there. <laughs> um, and 2011, and I was still doing great with my with running that's when Jeremy my husband um decided to like hey we need to to start something you know on our own and that's when we actually um established the recovery and worked on our um products and launching it but what happened through all this year when I was running I was creating great relationships not only with race directors, but athletes who were maybe better than me or slower than me, it doesn't matter. But, you know, being kind and always be engaged with anyone who you go race and um, be appreciative for what you're doing. That's, that's what probably took me one step forward to where I am today. Um, I think without these relationships, probably you will have had a slower start, even with our company. And I didn't create that relationship because I knew I'm gonna have a company one day. It was just because that's how my that's how I am. And I, I like being like that. But just be, being like that helped me where we are today. Um so then in 20 12 when I started representing the US and went to the world championships with them and got even more better like you know appearances and like getting the races and stuff that didn't change anything on me what I wanted to on when I want what I wanted to achieve in my runnings and um I never wanted more like I wanted more to get best out of me for me and that's how people should approach I mean like any athlete should approach that way in my opinion, um, because the better you do for yourself, you are gonna, you know, help the other ones achieve what they want to do too. It's like a cross country team. You're not gonna stay with a cross country team with the slowest person just because you want to be with them and pat them on the back. You want to go on the front there and pull them. You you win the race and you pull the third person next to you. It's the same approach pretty much in anything you want to do. Uh, at least for my view. <laughs> and, and then um, I have to say, once we start focusing on our um, company, the challenge is yes, because it, it comes to you, you know, it's just like it's your life of uh, many things. You know, you, you, you are now you have people working for you or, you know, Make sure you're doing right to the tax and all these things. You always have to be on, on your right path with everything to make sure everything is fine. Um, however, I, th 
think the discipline that I had within my training and my, you know, and my running and um, got me to be fine with it. And guess what happened? Because I had two challenges, great challenges. My life was running, which I still love running. I, I just love the running. It wasn't any, at one point, it wasn't any more for money. It was just like, hey, it's, I just want to do it because I just love it, right? Like, um, but it just, in fact, it, it made me stronger. And I couldn't run 110 miles anymore sometimes. I'll run 70 and I'll perform better. Guess why? Because my mind was focused on different things that will take the pain from the running and the running was taking, taking the pain from the business. Um, and not only that, I've seen many athletes like after retiring, really having a tr having trouble how to transition to from like one part to the other one. And that's when um, if you have something already on a plate that you know you're gonna serve it, then you're ready for that. If you have not arranged, then you don't know what you put in your plate to actually take your mind away from the pain of like, you know, you, you, you get in some stages in, in, in and in a mental stage, like I still wanna run, but I need to work. I don't get paid, but I need to, uh, but I still wanna be in the races, but you know, like, and that's not only my mind. Um, this is like a general thing I've seen in many athletes. And that's what, what during that time when we were actually creating this company is like, this is my way out when I want to be out. And it, it was an easy transition. transition. Um, the second transition, which is like the sweetest one was when I had my first daughter, you know, and I was already you know, 37 when I had her, but you see men mentally and physically, I felt so great that I was like, I wanna go back. And I just wanna like, I wanna show my daughter, look who made you. Like I took her to the races, I took her in Japan, I took her many good races to like, you know, but she's young, you, you know, two years old, you're not gonna remember all these things. I show her videos, I, like, I did that, yes, I did, <laughs> you know. And lately, she, because she knew I was running every single day training and I would leave her home with Jeremy or our nanny for a couple of hours. I said, mom, I miss seeing you run. Like, when are you gonna race? I wanna see you race. And can you be faster than that lady? Um, now she sees lady, like some girls or men running in our street and it's like, you know, they run like this. When you <laughs> run, you're like this. How come they are not that fast? Like, you know, so she sees like the difference, you know. So I made a profit and promised myself, I was like, okay, after the second one, which I'm I'm almost 31 weeks uh, pregnant now. So I gotta back, get back in shape because I need to take her back to that to see it. She's super competitive and anything she does, I let her beat me in all the runs. Let her take my the ball away, the soccer ball away. I in anything, just you know, to give her like the spark. But until it's gonna get real, until she's really fast, and I have to be fast, and then our competitiveness is gonna come back, you know. <laughs> anyway, to get back to it, like the second transition was the the child, which is easier, but at the same time missing being competing at the high level. It was again a challenge. Um. This time will probably be a lot easier because I've been through one stage with one child. I'm gonna be in the second one, and you know I'm 42 now, but I'm still um, willing to put myself up and see how much can I do at 40. I was gonna be 42. I want to see what am I made of after all these like years of training, having children, working. Um, and I think once you, you, because again, keeping your mind busy and have, look ahead for something that you actually want to achieve and have, that will, that will help you to transition in anything you want to do. Either you're um, starting to be a professional, maybe you're just like in college and that all you see is college running and stuff like that. And you go 
to professional, which is way different because you don't have a scholarship then. You have to earn it on your own. Uh, you're not gonna have the parents that they're like fine to give you some money until you're 22. You have to be again in your own. And that's when you find your window to see how much you can really achieve. But during this time, even when you're in your peak, think about what's after. Um, and even, you know, I made uh, the team for Romania in 2008 for Olympic Games to a point that, um, so I was third girl and then for some reason the politics, it, it didn't work well in there. And so I was uh, a substitute and I just didn't wanna go. I was like, I'm not gonna go just to be a fourth leg, like, no. And I was young and I thought, it's okay, I'm gonna go next time. But then I, that's when I decided to switch to USA and it was, and that's a shift, a huge shift, okay? So you go from a strong country, in 2008, we had top 10, two Romanians, one was a gold medalist. Um, where in 2008, the USA was not that strong. So I was like, I'm just gonna go and put myself out there, you know? You get off the poisoning before the race, you're done. And that's what happened to me in 2012. So how do you take the downs, like the real low downs, to actually move forward, it's here. Because you know before that food poisoning goes super strong, you know you're weak here and then you're gonna recover. And you're just gonna find another goal. And at the end of the day, for me, I was like, okay, you know what? God does want me to be in the Olympic games, that's fine. It's like, I'm doing this for myself anyway. And if I'm lucky to represent the country and, um, you know, proud for doing it. That's a plus. And I was lucky to do both, you know. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, that's that's you know, so you get you, you, from every every transition comes not only again, not only when you retire, but every transition comes from a very good race to the next. And how do you approach the next one? It might be a world record and the next one is not gonna be, it's gonna be a disappointment. No, it's not gonna be like, you know, you're still winning you know you're still going forward with your races and um and trainings and stay healthy and um put everything you can to actually again achieve stuff for you yeah so i i want to back up a little bit mm -hmm. because we've been talking about the transitions and stuff and um obviously you know it's you and your husband starting role recovery so that there's, you know, kind of two of you to split the workload. It's not just one of you doing all of it. Um, but I wonder about you. I think you touched on this a little bit, but I, I would agree it's important to start figuring out that transition before you need to, because otherwise, like I've talked to many guests, you have this hard stop, you know, it's your last Olympic Games, it's your last professional race, it's your whatever it is and, and, and for maybe you the listener maybe you were never a pro maybe you just you know stop doing whatever it was whatever we all deal with transitions whether we're you know professional athletes or not what I want to know is what do you think is there a good time or a good like mark for people to realize like this is what I need to start preparing the exit. Because as you know, being a pro athlete takes a lot of time and energy. Just doing that takes a lot of time and energy. Starting a business or trying to start a career, it also takes a lot of time and energy and then you get split. So I think maybe the difficulty and why some people don't prepare is that it takes your energy away from and focus away from, you know, doing that thing you're really good at. So do you think there's a, is there a good time or, or um, like a, a way to notice, like, this is what I need to start preparing for, you know, for the next phase. Let me back off a little bit on how we actually started the company. So you kind of see where, okay. how, how everything, went because it, it probably sounded easy the way I said it. 
well it's, it's easy when you're you're 10 years in it's easier to go like yeah everything's fine it, and it's fine because this is one great point here is because we believe in it um the same thing with training you believe in your coach and your, and your training you're gonna move forward and you're gonna do well the same thing if you have doubts you're gonna go up and down and nothing is gonna be solved so in 2011 in fact um no let's in 2008 i got married we got married and then jeremy was actually helping me on the bike um pacing me he was not really fun at all um he would jog on me sometimes in my opinion which is great and a month after we got married 2008 you know we have that uh, collapse in the economy um his company decided to lay off like their best people because they were the best paid they thought that was the right way he comes home all depressed and poor thing I just <laughs> I was driving his car and I had his mountain bike and I drove in the garage I broke his bike and then he comes home and he's like you know I'm gonna break now like you know like it's like man I, I hey you have two bad news today the bike is gone too <laughs> and he's like I don't care you know um, but I was doing well running and I think having the support even on his side and my side too it was huge during that time because hey we just got married we just built a house together we um from scratch and everything was like that um how am i going to do now i want to be a good husband you know and i said hey how about this like you you don't rush to find a job right now at the moment because everyone you know people are laying off people now that's it and just jump on me in more trainings, help me more, let's dig out of self for a few years and uh, um, help me. You know, we'll, we're a team here, you're not alone. Um, and I don't feel alone, certainly. So that's what he did to the point where he, after a few couple of months, he's like, I want to start running too, because it's boring. I'm like, it's like, okay, come, come along. <laughs> he came on a workout, in me and he thought after the work I was like I thought I saw Jesus in the clouds come and pick me up like you look so easy like you know I was like well, you know years of training right meanwhile he started doing his master's degree in Stanford University for uh, product development that he's a mechanical engineer of the trade and that's when he's like training going to school um, going to school basically and I was getting massages and paying someone you know two times a week or something and that's the only way to keep fresh your muscles and stuff that was it for me um icing baths swimming whatever it is you know and he's like i i can't afford to go pay massages like okay then he is like i was like i want to look he hated the stick he, yeah like, like no he hated the Foam rolling being on his like buckle position, he's tired. It's like, I don't know. Then he is like, How come is nothing there? Something that is really compressing the, the muscle itself, like, you know, so you don't have to do too much mm -hmm. work. I have actually anyone here, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you see right? It's like, if you haven't seen it, so if, if you're just listening, you're missing out the YouTube version to okay. see if you can actually see the thing, or or you can go to rollrecovery.com and they'll, they'll show you the devices. Yeah, he, you know, and then he started drawing stuff. He went in the garage, he went to Home Depot, bought some PVP pipe, pipes and all these things that he needed. He made something crazy similar. Um, and then the first product I was kind of funny looking, it was like a little robot looking like it's, it's kind of clunky and stuff. Second one was perfect. And that's when we, it's like okay we gotta make some patents on it we gotta show people to see if they would like it you know and we had neighbors like make me one do like, like if well, everybody was trying like, i want one where's this like, you know it's a good way to validate demand when people are asking to buy one and you don't have them to sell <laughs> yeah. well, it was great i mean like it was flattering because that we did it for us like yeah. it was not for anyone else of course it was like i want it for me <laughs> um but when we started to have 
to put like a lot of money into patents and like, you know, productions and molds and trips and all those things, all the reserve money we were having, it was kind of like slowing down, right? Yeah. You go race as a professional, if nobody knows that probably, you don't get the money right away, a check. You get a week, and I mean, a week will be like fast. In a month, two, three months. So every time we'll be like, okay, we're waiting on the check, keep going, you know. Yeah. Uh, asking family and friends and banks and everybody is saying, no, we can give you money, right? Yeah. So we basically said, we got a lot of no's when we started the company. And we just kept moving forward. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, like even if it takes a little longer, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Uh, and one time we were really short on like starting the production. That was all we had molds, we had we we the patents, we have everything. So I was like, okay, we don't have any more money for production mm -hmm. until the next check is coming, you know. Yeah, I, I do want to stop you for just one second. So for you, the listener, if you're not familiar, getting a mold made, even if you're going to China or wherever production is, getting a mold made for your product is not cheap. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's even very simple products sometimes can be an easily a five figure expense. Like it's, it's not a, it's not for the faint of heart, is it? So I just, I want to give a little more context to the situation. Yeah, yeah. And this, and this product is not like a cheap product made. Right. Yeah. Just to be like so precise and perfect that you go back and forth and every every change is like a cost you know like it's everything yeah. um so one morning we come from the church it was easter morning and jeremy was ready to talk to me and i was like oh like, he sat me down he gave me a tea a little cookie he made, you know um and he said, like, look, to move forward, there's one thing we can, we have to do. And he knew how much this meant to me because my background, the way I came from my family, you know, like, uh, the only thing to move forward because nobody's giving us money is to actually sell the house. And so he's trying to butter you up before giving yeah, you this news. But guess what? I did, he barely finished a sentence and I said, okay, let's do it because I'm not born in any like, you know, silver spoons and everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, my parents lost their houses to the banks two times. We were homeless, sleeping to my grandma on the floor. So I was ready for anything. So I guess we're young. We, at this age, we can actually start again, anything. So if we fail, which I think we won't, um, and that's the belief I, we had in the product, I'm okay to fail again. It's okay. And he like <clears throat> looked at me, he's like, are you sure? Like, really? That was easy. Like, that's the support in anything you want to start something. You should have either if you either is your family, your spouse, your partner, your good friends, to not let anyone pull you down on something you believe. So we're at the point that I was like, okay, we're paying even the mortgage right at this moment in credit cards and we're not afraid. It's fine. We just close our eyes. Like, okay, it's fine. We're going to, you know, we sold the house, we sold the cars. We actually had only one left. Like, it was fine. We rented a place. And everything came, came not necessarily smooth. Don't get me wrong. Again, like you're saying, things are heavy. You have to change and everything. You know, it's like everything doesn't come. Like, okay, here is a product. You're done. No, you're not. <laughs> no. Um, but the most exciting part was when we actually got the first 10 samples. We took uh, a couple of samples with us to the, uh, it's, it's a famous coffee shop next door in, in Boulder. North. It's called the uh, Amante Coffee Shop. And they're on its cycles and they, they, that's your stop there. And we took this RA, it's called, and we try and you know, film people to see when their reaction when they test it. And I'm not kidding, two people, one of them, some of them were outside and some one, this guy was all inside. He tries, this is like, do you need an investor? We go inside and the same, like this guy's like, hey, do you need help? I, I, can, I, I'm, I can give money, you know, like in an investor. And then there's another team, like young athletes team. And they tried, they already were going nuts. Like, you know, I was like, I was like, we're in good hands now. 
Like if these guys, nobody said I hated it. And you know, it's gonna be a percentage there that they don't like that kind of massage, it's fine. But the, the feedback and and the the way everything went, uh, it gave us even more courage. So the cool thing is that well, you know, we ordered a couple of you know, two thousand units for the first production after we knew everything was fine. And we said, like, you know, it's probably gonna take a year or two until we sell them. We don't, you know, we don't know too many people. But the connections I was telling you earlier that I made with great friends, you know, like Charlene and Des, and you know, like all race directors, and 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 not only in US, like Japan, Europe. The war went up fast mm -hmm. because they not because they're all my friends, but they like the product. Right. And I always tell them, like, if you don't like the product, it's totally fine. Give me your feedback. I love it. Like, because we want to be here. Don't don't say anything good just because of me. Yeah. Not, you know, which can I, be I never, hard with friends sometimes because they're like, I like you, and you know, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But yeah. real good friends will tell you it's terrible if it's terrible. And it, it and it, it's the approach I always had on earning it, mm -hmm. not giving it. Like, you know, what I mean, like. I want I want to earn your trust that you like that product rather than just oh it's good yeah you know what I mean like it's like and I I you can ask anyone I told them like if you don't like it don't even worry we didn't pay out this to tell, say any word because we don't have that money mm -hmm. um but then they, they they you know they saw where I started it again came from the U.S. with nothing and like trying to do something with my husband and um and going in this in the us is the, the country of opportunities if you can if you know how to take it mm -hmm. um don't give it let them work for it and if you believe in it you're gonna move forward with something that you believe in it um so yeah same this is our approach we too can be and it's mainly because again we believed in it we took the risk but the risk was positive and we kept saying these 2000 units would take a year or two and we said, okay we'll make the money back you know like whatever that's fine it took three months to be gone and we're out of stock so that was like okay now we can actually maybe hire some people we, we gave jobs right like that that's a great thing mm -hmm. we hired athletes who actually they're professional runners and they, i understood their schedule and trainings and races and they appreciate us. We have people in the office, they're still like there for 10 years already. Um, and it's it's because it's a, like we built a trust, we built relationships and um, and nobody wants to leave us. I mean, we don't want them, we, we, want them, we don't want them to go because we, we love them and it's part of the family. And so that's the same approach when you go from one from any career not only running really because you can be an amateur and in fact running can just really be part of your therapy mental mm -hmm. therapy physical therapy you don't have to be a champion in anything but if you educate yourself hey if i train five times a week i'm gonna be fit if i eat well and i don't eat junk the time i'm gonna be a better runner and healthier if I, so if you know how to do these things, you can also approach your work, your career the same way, because you will see it with a clear vision. And I think that's important, like once you're set on, on some things you wanna do in life, it's like really, what are you best at? Put that thing on next one. If you are about to retire, put your mind because you, you're not a champion or a runner. You're representing a country or something for nothing. You, you've been there because you work for it and you knew what to do. And you're going to take the same concept to the next page. And if you're not, if, if you fail a little bit, not all the trainings are perfect, right? You back up and say, like, okay, why did I make a mistake there? And then you go back and say, like, oh, okay, I cannot touch that to that problem um 
and staying positive, like always positive, even even when you know errors are triggering you and just start shooting at you, just take them brave because some of these um, errors, like it's always to a wake up call. You know, it's like, oh, that was a, a good reminder for something that I need to do better. And and some people can take that as a negative, where you can actually take it as a really good positive, turn anything negative and positive, spin it around, and put it right back into your plan. And I hope that helped answer. No, you're good. Um, so one thing you kind of uh, mentioned, and so for me, it was just a couple hours ago, I was talking with last week's podcast guest for so for you the listener if you're listening to this when it comes out it was last week alexi vermulen um he made a big transition from sport so he used to race cycling on the road and as a 23 year old decided to leave to go to gravel even though he was doing well and so we talked a little about transitions in that episode too but one of the things that i, I think i talked a little bit about with him i, I like to talk about is like something you mentioned which is like oh separating who you are from what you do like if you're you know you were saying okay maybe you're not you know world champion anymore maybe you're not a runner like you're taking those kind of raw qualities of who you are and applying them to the next thing i think probably especially for pros i would guess but even for non-pros, competitive people, people who take their you know sport very seriously, I think it's a challenge for many of us not to be like, well, I'm a runner, so I have to run. So like, especially when people get injured or they have to do something else, it's hard to move away from that identity. So I'd like to ask you about how do you, how do you, I guess maybe personally or in general, separate your identity as like I'm, I'm just me. I, I run, but that's not who I am. I, I, I feel like sometimes being more humble because everything in life will make you humble. Like anything in life can make you humble. And um, putting yourself a step back a little bit and be more calm of, on what you're doing will actually help you on this transition a lot well um like you know whoever knows me they think like oh you're such an amazing one you achieved this and that and that and the way i see it is like uh jim makes fun of me all the time because i was just I, I i'm just saying like i'm just lucky you know i was it's like no that's not luck you work for it and you prove it now once you prove it many times like yeah, but I still want to say I'm lucky, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's one approach of positivity because maybe the next race or the next job or whatever it is, uh, it might feel hard. You, you might feel like you're not really achieving even what you had before. And how do you approach that? And the way you approach it is like, take a step back and say like, I'm okay to fail a little bit. Because, yeah, maybe I was lucky with that race or not. But I know I'm better than that. But it was not my day. And I will have another one. You know, it's, and, and again, like, turn that ne negative spin the other way around and approach it differently. Maybe you're not going to like a new person at work. Uh, how are you going to approach that? You have to be ready for that. Um, so how are you ready for that? Yeah. Read these people, read a, like, the, you know, it's training or not, like read the training, um, see if you, what you can achieve from that and keep moving forward positively. I'm not sure if you still hear me because I think, uh, you no, know. I can hear you. Okay. The, the window froze. Um, oh, I'm, I'm frozen. Sorry. That happens in my video sometimes. That's fine. Uh, so, for example, um, 
after I had, before I had my daughter, I used to run 100, 110 miles a week. Mm -hmm. And one of my main trainings, and I knew I'm ready for a marathon, was I will do like a 35K, which is what is that, like 20 miles, over 20 miles, mm -hmm. um, where I would basically start a little slower than a race pace and then finish faster than a race pace. And all they do is pretty hard, right? Yeah. Um, and I learned through this time to actually, it was hard for me to accept that I can't reach sometimes that I used to reach then, right? And then you have to find, you have, it's like, okay, I need to find reasons why. And that's a mistake sometimes. But sometimes it can be fine. It's like, okay, here is why. I used to run a longer time. I used to take naps, which I'm not. I used to sleep nine hours of night in which right now I'm like eight, where actually five, four, I'm awake. You know, so it's just like that transition of like motherhood and breastfeeding and mm -hmm. and you still and you still want to achieve what you had before, you must be crazy. Or take it slow, build it up, and see what you can, you, you can achieve with less. So that's when you start accepting the change. Um, and the moment I started uh, accepting that change, guess what? Everything came on, on, on place. Um, I ran not more than 80 miles, the max I probably did after my daughter, like when I was like the highest week or something. But usually it would be like between 65 and 75 miles and I still run 230. And I was on my, you know, all, all the time on my feet running after the baby, cooking, emails, working. And, and it was because my mind was taking me, like whenever I was focused on something, I was like, we'll do that thing right there. When I was in the running, that's all I could do right here. And I wish I would have been a little stronger in racing because I, I felt like I wasn't, I was a little weak knowing that I, I left my daughter home, my husband, and half of the way in the race, I will think of them. I couldn't sleep all night and like, are they saying, I know my husband is like on her, like I tell her like, you better watch. I don't want to hear anything. Like, you know, you are like, if something happens, you know, <laughs> I thought he's, he's amazing. He's like, he's such a great dad. Um, but my, I couldn't take my mind away from that. And in the race, whenever I it was hard, I will put even more down myself because I will think more of my daughter. I was like, it's so hard. I train so hard and I train harder than before. And I achieved fastest time than before her. Why am I not doing this? And, and then the moment I will wake up, it's like, oh, wait, my legs are back. Oh, wait, my, my head is back. And then I will just try to recover everything I lost in the last 10K where everybody's dying. It's like, why didn't I not do that in the middle when it was the hardest part? You know? So it's all about how you can actually manage these feelings mm -hmm. on, on anything you do. Like this is just a raw example. It's like a really good example because I could see myself like where I was failing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I will take my daughter to races and guess what? She wants mommy. She's not gonna want daddy too much. So I'll be like holding, breastfeeding, whatever I'll do. So it's like my energy is off too. Like, so where do you draw the line, um, you, you know? And again, you need to accept you're getting older, you're getting less time, you're not gonna be young forever. And if it's, it's okay to slow down, but feel the same way as you're young, because for example, maybe when I was running on my 220s, I felt great and energized and the trainings were as the same as hard as when I was in my late 30s. But I felt the same way because I will back off and I'm like, hey, you gotta respect yourself for what you're doing and your time you're spending before training. You're not putting your legs up anymore. And if it's like five seconds, 10 seconds slower a mile, that's an achievement because you're doing so much more. Mm -hmm. And and again, like you have to, to hammer these trainings to get there, to feel good, even if you're 
40 now and you're running say three hours and you know when you're 25 give an example and now you're 40 and you're going to be 350 but if you're smart you're going to feel the same way by just accept that that 15 minutes it's it's your time that you can spend on training recovery and resting and and your bones and muscles are not recovering the same way and give credit to yourself for anything. And I think that's, that's what one great advice here is to like go with the flow and, and feel it. How is that, you know, how you pro how, how smart are you and how good are you feeling about yourself moving forward with each year and every, you know, five years from now is not going to be like today. You know, you just have to accept that. And the way to accept it is to be proud of yourself. Hey, I'm still putting myself out there to like, not to show the world. It's for me again. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, this is what I love to do. And you're not going to be a world champion anymore after you're done. And if any, and you know, I tell you what, people forget about you fast. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. And there are some artists there who have been pampered and all this in the media and all these things. And the moment it's cut, they go on a depression. Mm -hmm. But why would you go that way? You have to try to avoid that, right? And accept like, hey, I'm a human like anyone else. I might be a 220s girl right now and maybe tomorrow I'll be a three hour and I'll be like still loving it and feeling the same way I was and still competitive and feel that fire in the tum, tummy and like just, and, and it's still great. And like, and that's what I want to do with for my daughter too. When we come back yeah. running, and I was like, I want to show her. And it's okay. She hates being beat up on something. Like she's like, I was like, I, I think I know where you got that from. <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm pretty sure. Yesterday she was swimming on the pool with her friend, and she's a very good swimmer. We took her swimming since she was nine months old, so because I want her to be safe and stuff. And she's. Tiny for four, four and a half, you know, and like skinny, like like me, what can I say? You know? Yeah. Tiny, you know, petite. And her friend is six months or seven months older than her, but is like this much taller than her, like stronger and stuff. And they're both great swimmers. And I can see the competitiveness in her and how she likes to challenge herself. She'll be like, Throw me these things, three, three of them, not two. Why do you throw me? You throw her two and I will catch three. <laughs> and she'll bring her all these three little toys from, you know, they go on the bottom of the pool and they catch them and she'll come so fast out first. Like I was like, you, you don't always have to be first. It's fine to be second. It, it's fine to like see sometimes weaknesses to actually know or take that weakness up high again. Mm -hmm. And again, you slow down, that's fine. Find, find some challenges there to actually make you feel positive and great about yourself because mm -hmm. if you're not, then you're going to be stuck. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't want to like overstep my bounds, but just at least from our conversation, I think um, she's just going to, she's going to be just fine because you just, the from what we've talked about, I think you've got a really good handle on, I mean, all of it, the ups, the downs, how to deal with it, how to be content while you're still being competitive. Like it's a balance, obviously, like you're, if you're hungry to win, you're hungry to win. But then you also know, like you said, most of the time you lose. Yeah. <laughs> like that's it. But you have to deal with that. And, and so I think, I think she's going to be um, in good hands. So. Yeah, I'm not going to push her. In fact, the cool thing is that I sh she had bike and a training wheels for until this year. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, was like, I think you're, you, you're really ready to take that pedals out, like the, the, the wheels out, you know, training wheels. And she's like, Mommy, no. I was like, Okay, I'm listening to you, no problem. Two weeks ago, she's like, Mom, I really want to take these wheels off. I said, Are you sure? Like, okay. So Jeremy helped her, like, guide her. In 10 minutes, she knew how to learn how to go in all training mm -hmm. wheels. 
because she was ready. Yeah. And um, and that's one thing too with children and everything. Let them be ready when they're ready. Mm -hmm. Let's not push them because I, as much as competitive I am, uh, and I want to see her, you know, explore and do so well in many sports and everything. She can do a pull up now. It's like amazing. Um, she sees me and her dad, and she wants to try. So she, she's good. Every kid is gonna live by example, you know. And we push ourselves, and I think that's what she sees. And and I'm grateful that she sees that, and she she takes it in. But. You know, if she was not ready for the training was to take off, I would be like, no, it's okay, whenever you're ready. And she's like, and now I think I'm ready for the the bike with the brakes on the on, on the handles. Mm -hmm. Like, hmm, you're gonna have to learn a new skill now. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll do great. I, yeah. Um, um Addies, we're starting to run out of time. Um, I'm gonna ask you the question. I'm asking everybody this season, each season I have a singular question I ask every single guest. Um, I have a feeling you'll have a great answer for this one. So this year I'm asking everybody, how do you celebrate your wins? I, um, how do I celebrate my wins? Okay. Right so here. if you achieve something, it doesn't yeah. have to be like, I'm world champion now, but just when, when sure you I achieve something that was important to you, how, how do you celebrate? First of all, I think Every, every, every single little one, every single win, I'll say, I, I celebrated inside of me because, um, because when I lose, I cry a lot, you know, and, and I'm easy going even then when I lose, like, yeah, you don't, you don't have to win to actually win it, right? I mean, to be first and winning can be like, I had a great race and that's all I wanted and I wanted the time and I'm, I'm super happy, right? But when you go under while you train and and you, you don't achieve what you're actually hoping to, that's the hardest lose sometimes. And that's when you actually have to really know that's a win too, because that's like, how do you want, how do you get out from that? So when I win, I just, I, I honestly, I just smile and I came way for the next challenge. Because that's that's like that's one uh, that means I gained something, and at the same time I ask myself, could I have done more? Um, I don't go celebrating a vacation or like a beer or whatever. You know, it's like I'm gonna go for a next next day run to actually celebrate my legs to see how they feel after the race and if I'm ready for the next one or or the work, like I, I made a, I made a huge project and it went better than I thought. I'm not gonna be like, yes, it was me, just because of me, because I thought of this. Like, I'm putting the whole team on there, the whole team, celebrating with them, even though 90% of it I've done it or something. I prefer to get everyone involved that was even this much part of it to feel to make them feel the same way. And that's the same thing with the race or, or work or school with AJ or uh, everything. I just like to put involve everyone that has been part of it. And that's my, my biggest celebration to feel them good about it too. Feel like they've been part of it. So. And if people want to see what you're up to, follow the racing you're doing, um, you know, see how you're recovering after uh, baby's born here in, it's coming up soon. It's going to be very, very soon. As well, um, eight weeks left. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time this comes out, it will only be four weeks to go. Um, wh where can they find you? Where can they keep up with all the coming and goings of what you guys are doing at Full Recovery, you, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm active pretty much in Instagram, and I never flood people with anything. Like, I'm pretty, I'm staying low with everything I'm doing, but um I get a lot of messages and questions and I'm always happy to answer. I have from young, very young children, I mean like, you know, high schoolers to like um, over 40s and 50s people who write me and they ask me, you know, advice. And I, I love giving the advices because that's that's who I am, it's part of me. Um, our comp so it's Adi under, underline Nelson. It's either 
usually Instagram. Uh, don't talk about politics with me because I'm not a political person. <laughs> I'm like a very like, whatever is best for you, do it. Ask a running questions. Just keep keep it to the running. Yes, like uh, like life questions. Like yes. really, because everything else doesn't matter. Like really, um, our company is a slow recovery, and Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, um, and uh, yeah, like I'm here anytime. <laughs> Awesome. Eddie, thanks for hanging out with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. And I hope uh, your you know, listeners are going to enjoy this episode.